You're listening to Glove Up or Shut Up on the Angry Marks Podcast Network. Now we should move on to this weekend's fight night uh, with BJ Penn and Yara Rodriguez in the main event. Yes, indeed. So, BJ Penn, Yara Rodriguez for the, in the featherweight division. Now, is Todd Grisham going to be on the show, do you think? Have we heard anything official? I believe this will be his announcing debut. That's what I've read. That's what I've been led to believe. And this is a main event that is intriguing, but I find, hmm, I, I want Rodriguez to win. I, I just, I, I'm, I'm with you on this one. Why is he still fighting? Why is BJ Penn still fighting in 2017? Yes, it's problematic at this point. I'm, I'm just going to focus strictly on the statistics here and not even make it personal for me because it is personal but i want to deal in facts here for a second okay if we look at bj penn's record since 2010 he's had two losses to frankie edgar Mm -hmm. a win over matt hughes a draw with john fitch and losses to nick diaz rory mcdonald and frankie edgar for a third time so in the last seven years he's won one fight. Now, I have to ask you this. What are the odds right now? Because I don't think they're in BJ Penn's favor. They are most certainly not. Minus 485 for Rodriguez, plus 385 for Penn. So, he's a heavy dog on this. Alright, so I got Rodriguez. I'm sure you have Rodriguez as well. Again, focusing strictly on the statistics here. I have to give it to Rodriguez because in that same time span that I was just talking about over the last seven years, he's nine and one. And the only guy he lost to is some guy I've never even heard of called Luis Roberto Herrera. And that was in December of 2012 in Mexican fighting promotions. And, And who's heard of that promotion either? No offense to them. Well, let's move on to Joe Lozon and Marcin Held. Yes, uh, quality fight. I think that should be a fun fight to watch. The odds makers right now have it minus 140 for Lozon, plus 120 for Held. I'm not sure they're giving Marcin Held enough credit. Well, I would lean towards Lozon on this fight. I mean, I'm not discounting Held by any means, but... I think Lozon, I don't want to say he's on his last legs here, but I think a win here would definitely do him a lot of good. I think a loss here would really put him in the crosshairs for being cut. I just, I don't see much if he loses here. Like, what do you do with him? I think because people look at the last three fights for Held and they see a unanimous decision loss to Will Brooks and a unanimous decision loss to Diego Sanchez, They may think that he's not an elite fighter. Well, I would argue that he actually improved as a result of having those two fights because Will Brooks was a very dominant champion and that made him step up his striking ability and improve a lot, which we saw in his fight with Dave Jansen. And I would say that losing that fight to Diego Sanchez, who basically had the fight of his life, Mm -hmm. that would put Marcin Held on yet another level. I think those losses actually made him better. He's no longer just the guy who dies for your leg and goes for a toe hold or a leg lock. But what about Lozon's last three fights? Do you see a a pattern there as well? Well, looking at Lozon's last three fights, since you're comparing it fight for fight over the same span, it's two losses and a win. Ironically, Diego Sanchez is the fight that Joe Lozon won there. So if you were going to compare apples to apples or do the infamous MMA math, you would say (laughs) Lozon beats Held because Lozon beats Sanchez and Sanchez beat Held. That's how you would do that math. But I don't think that really works. That's just something that fight fans like to do. I think if you look at the losses to Evan Dunham and Jim Miller, I'd say that puts... All three of these guys relatively in the same fringe category. Mm-hmm. 
as guys who are not at the elite level but capable of beating each other. I don't think I don't think any of them are world beaters right now. And I think Held is a younger, up, more up and coming fighter with a lot more to gain, and I think Lozon is a fighter with a lot more to lose. Absolutely. Now, what about Court McGee and Ben Saunders? Okay, the odds makers have this one as a coin flip. It's minus 105 McGee, minus 115 for the Killer B. So, the odds don't tell us very much here. What do you think? You know, I'm going to go with Saunders, but it's a coin flip for me as well. Uh, you guys, if you fight these guys 10 times, you're going to, you're going to have one guy win six out of 10, the other guy four out of 10. Um, I see Saunders winning this by decision. I think right now, Saunders has the better argument with four wins in his last five fights and decent wins. Chris Heatherly, Kenny Robertson, Jacob Volkman. Mm-hmm. I mean, again, maybe not the top guys at his weight class, but not scrubs, not bad guys at all. And Court McGee is tough. We've seen that in Ultimate Fighter. Court McGee is tough, but I feel like he's not beating the guys he should. Like no. Santiago Ponzinibbio, he got TKO'd in the first round. That was not a good sign. For a guy that we just talked about how tough he is, he probably should have won that fight. And Ryan LaFleur, maybe that was coin flip. I'd have to go back and look at the odds, but I don't even know if that really compares to what Court McGee is today since that was three years ago. And that's the other thing that's a little concerning about Court McGee is his most active year of late was 2016, and he only had two fights in that calendar year. Well, I'm going to go with Saunders, and as, yeah. uh, judging by your comparison, I think you're going leaning towards that as well. I, I'm leaning towards Saunders after doing that breakdown. What about John Morega and Sergio Pettis that was just added to the main card? Well, let's look at the odds first. It's a narrow favorite to Sergio Pettis, minus 135. John Moraga is plus 115. Now we look at their actual fights for comparison's sake. And John Moraga has not been doing too, too well, but he's fought some tough competition. Joseph Benavidez, in particular, losing a unanimous decision to him, really not any shame in that. If you go the distance with Benavidez, you're actually doing something right, win or lose, so I'll I'll give him a little credit for that. Mateus Nicolau, that was a split decision, so arguably that could have gone either way, so not terrible on Moraga's record. Meanwhile, for Pettis... He's won four of his last five, with his only loss in that span being to Ryan Benoit. But again, I question the activity level. He only had one fight in all of 2016, and that was a win over Chris Galates. I feel like Sergio Pettis has more upside, but these long layoffs between fights are not convincing me that He's a dominant fighter in this fight. See, I, I think Sergio Pettis is going to win this fight. Um, but it's just the way he's going to win it. I'm still having, I, I'm still trying to figure out how he's going to win it. I'm, I want to say decision, but well, I would love to see, I'd love to see a stoppage here. Th- that is kind of his pattern. Eight of I his know. 14 wins are by decision. That's, that's why it's a little hard to get excited about Sergio Pettis. It's like, okay. You're a good fighter, you're the brother of a famous fighter, and you're yeah. training with a great team in Rufus Sports. So all of the elements are there, and yet very rarely does Sergio Pettis just have that fight that absolutely makes you say, God, I need to see that again. Like, maybe the Bruce Leroy fight would be an example of that, mm-hmm. but there aren't too many fights like that that are fight of the night caliber. Like, that fight and his fight with Matt Holbar are like the two best examples. Now, those are his flashes of greatness, but I'm not saying he's going to have a slobber knocker fight of the night candidate here against Morega. I'm just saying I think he needs to to have one of those those highlight stoppages. I'm not saying he's going to get fight of the night, but I want to see him 
have a highlight reel type finish here in this fight. Yeah, you don't want to see him take a third decision in a row. Cause no. that's not that's not doing him any favors. Maybe if you'd get like uh if you have a highlight style win here, you'll, you know, be on the main card, not just a last minute change to the main card, and maybe even go onto a pay per view or a Fox a main Fox show as opposed to a fight night on, you know, F S one. Right. Something that would move him up. Absolutely. Now as far as the prelims are concerned there is one fight I'm interested in, Chase Sherman and Walt Harris in the heavyweight division. Yeah, that is a potentially interesting fight. The odds makers have that one on my sheet here as almost a coin flip. Mm-hmm. Plus 115 to Sherman, minus 135 to Harris. Harris, I, he just seems to be mired in he could be great, but he's not proving it. Like, he he has good fights against average guys and then bad fights against good guys and then loses split decisions that he could have won. It's like he just never really gets on track. He needs, like Predis, he needs one of those, like, statement fights. Mm-hmm. But what do you make of Chase Sherman? What do you think of him? You know, if he beats her, if he beats Harris in spectacular fashion, that will wake some people up to see his potential. See, I thought you were going to talk about his nickname. Oh, uh, I tried to ignore it. What the Tell vanilla, the, fans. the vanilla gorilla? <sighs> yeah. Well, all we know so far, at least for his UFC career is that he lost to Justin Ledette. But before that, he had run off four wins in a row. And overall, I mean, 9-2 and two as a heavyweight is not anything to be ashamed of, especially considering that, you know, you worked your way up to UFC by getting to that point. Now, as far as the prelims on Fight Pass or any other prelim fight, does anything catch your eye on this show? I'm honestly surprised you didn't go with Alexi Olenek and Victor Pesta. I feel, I don't know. I feel I, like that might actually be the better heavyweight fight of the prelims. You think so? Yeah. I mean, look at the guys that Pesta has fought. You know, Huslan Magomedov, Derek Lewis, Marcin Tybura. I mean, okay, he lost all of those fights, but at least <laughs> he was fighting the upper levels of the heavyweights. And he wasn't just getting knocked out in the first round. He he went to the third round for a unanimous decision loss. He went to the third round for a TKO. He got KO'd by a head kick by Tybura in the second round. But I remember that, yeah. Yeah, what I'm saying is, is Pesta was actually hanging in there and acquitting himself. He wasn't just going out 10 seconds into a round or anything. So I, I think there's something there. And Alenic, I mean... The only bad thing I would say about Olenek is that he's one of these fighters that, as good as he might be, it might also be too late because he's been around so long. I mean, he's had 61 professional fights. That is an awful lot, especially for a heavyweight. And he's not young either. He's 39 years old. So time may be running out for him. But honestly... there's no new Legends division for the heavyweights after 40? Well... I could think of one, but I don't want to say it and get in trouble. <laughs> I just, I, I'm looking, I see more potential in the Harris-Sherman fight, but I see your point. No, I, I think the pesta Olenek fight is the one I'll look forward to. And just to wrap things up, the main event of the prelims, Frankie Sayans against Augusto Mendez. Yeah, oh, and the main event of the fight pass is... Jocelyn Jones Leibarger versus Nina Ansarov, which also presents itself as a quality fight, in my opinion. I think if that fight ends in the first round, it'll be bonus. Leibarger is plus 120 and Ansarov is minus 140. Now, do you think the reason there are a bunch of coin flips is because of this card in general, or is it just they the odds will change once the weigh-ins happen? These actually, the fights that we haven't talked about are the ones that really aren't coin flips. Like Joaquin Christensen is minus two thirty-five over Bojan Milojevic, and Drakar Close or Close, I'm not sure which, is minus two thirty-five over Devin Powell at plus one ninety-five. Tony Martin is minus two eighty over Alex White at plus two forty. 
So there are actually some somewhat lopsided fights, according to the odds makers, and we didn't even review them. <laughs>